awesome day. We are going live, ladies. Mm -hmm. What an awesome day. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. So wow, ladies, thank you so, so, so much. Guest speakers, thank you all for being here tonight. My goodness, we are live on Facebook, I want to believe. Let me just take a moment to warmly welcome you all, whichever platform you are logging in from, wherever you are logging in from. It's beautiful and lovely, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for logging on. So wherever you are coming from, whichever part of the world you're connecting from, welcome, welcome. And a warm hello to you all. Please say hello in the comment section. Let someone know where you are connecting from, what's happening in your life and how your day has been. You know, um, it's a very um, relaxed and very informal meeting where you as 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 you know as an attendee and us here in zoom we can all connect and just kind of chat and have a nice time together let me know where you're called where you're connecting from we are going we are live on facebook we will be live on youtube as well so let us know where you are connecting from uh just drop a wave or a jive say something nice say something interesting and if you're on facebook or youtube um what is going on in your life what has been happening in your life and just tell us how have you been spending this amazing international women's day week what has been happening to you what has been your point of celebration and what are the things that you've been doing um, my guest speakers are going to come on in a minute and just say hello but i wanted to take this moment to welcome you all um to international women women's day um listen just one word to describe your year so far. What has it been for you the past year? And how significant is this International Women's Day for you? Like, what is it that you're looking out for? What is it that you are hoping this particular International Women's Day will um, bring in your life? What are the challenges you've been facing? You know, drop something in, your, in the comment section, say hello to somebody. And um, yeah, just let us know what's been happening and what's your challenge? What has been the biggest challenge for you as a woman? What is it? What's that one thing or two things or three things that have been really challenging you? Maybe it could be in your career uh, progression. It might be in your business. It could be, um, you know, in ministry. It could be whatever assignment God has given you on this side of life. You may be a woman in politics. You could be, you know, a, a woman who is in commerce and industry, whatever it is you're doing, let us know what has been the biggest challenge for you. Um, what are the barriers that you've had that you faced and how have you managed to break those barriers and what has been happening to you? Uh, please take a moment to share and take someone on Facebook. Tell them to come on over, send them our trending hashtags today, which are. Hashtag IWD, which is International Women's Day 2024. Our hashtag, our next hashtag is, so we've got five hashtags. International Women's Day 2024. Hashtag inspire. Inspire somebody. Hashtag empower somebody. Hashtag equip. Hashtag DTM. And we do have an extra hashtag today, simply because we want you to use this hashtag and be signposted to a phenomenal event coming up. And we've got hashtag W4A, which stands for Women for Africa. So we've included that hashtag in our conversation tonight. So when you put the hashtag, you will be signposted to um, a, a special event coming up. And our guest speaker will talk about that soon. So let me say another warm welcome before I just open this, this conversation. Today, we're joining many voices around the globe to celebrate and bring an awareness to global and community issues that matter to women, things that matter to women. And while we are on this side of life, we will continue to have issues that will matter to us as women, 
things that will, you know, that will continue to, to touch us, things that will continue to affect us, things that will continue to challenge us as women and so um you know today is 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 is, is just bringing that awareness of global and community issues that matter to women issues that are in our families issues that we meet in issues that we meet in our in our careers in our jobs in our assignments of on life in our businesses you know um in the different things that god has called us to do and our agenda tonight on this platform is really to help us to reflect, to inspire, to motivate and women and to become everything that God has ordained for us to be. So when we inspire others, we understand that and, 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 and we understand more of the value of what a woman is. And so we are able to forge even a better world. We are able to forge better communities and better families. And when, 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 a, when, when a woman, I know this for a fact, that when a woman inspires another, it brings a sense of belonging. It brings a sense of relevance. It brings a sense of, I was born to do this. You know, it brings a sense of celebrating. And that's what we want to do tonight. We want to celebrate diversity. We want to celebrate empowerment. And International Women's Day, many of you will know because in the different places that, um, in the different um, organizations you work in, or just your day-to-day, -day, you will by now know that it is actually a global celebration, but not just a careless global celebration. It is a celebration of the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. So whatever it is you are doing on this side of life, there is a stage and a platform to celebrate you. International Women's Day serves as a powerful reminder of the progress that you and I, as women, have made and the good work that still needs to be done. For we do have a great work that needs to be done. But we say, look, each success, each progress, everything we've done up to now, we celebrate you. So I don't care whether you are, you know, um, whether you're braiding hair, whether you are in a kitchen or whether you are a CEO or whether you are on, on, on a big platform, maybe you're in politics, maybe you are, you know, on the board in, 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 in commerce and industry, I don't care. But as long as you're a woman, there is something significant you're doing. You could be a housewife. You could be a stay-at-home mom. You could be looking after your children. Whatever you are doing on this side of life, we are saying tonight on International Women's Day, well done, well done. We are proud of you. You're doing a great job. In case nobody has told you, you're doing an amazing job. You're doing a phenomenal job. So tonight, we as women, uh, um, we know that we are dearly loved by our daddy, Jehovah God. And we are calling for society, we are calling for communities to kind of help us break down these barriers that women are, are facing every day, break down barriers, challenging the stereotypes and creating environments where our daughters, where your daughter, where my daughters will be able to be valued and to be respected. We want tonight to have a conversation where we can encourage you to recognize and celebrate the amazing contributions that women have made in your life, in your family, in your generation, in your bloodline, wherever there are women that are surrounding you, we are celebrating them tonight and saying the amazing contributions you're making is recognized, is acknowledged, and we are proud of you. So our key pillars of our conversation tonight is going to include inspiring you and promoting diversity in leadership, promoting diversity in uh, women who are called into corridors of decision making. Um, you know, we are going to include inspiring a woman who is starting a business. We want to inspire a woman who's been called into ministry. We want to inspire a woman who's been called to be a stay-at-home mom. 
we want to inspire a woman who's started an online business and they you know she's trying to 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 create an environment where her business can be known whatever it is your brand tonight matters it doesn't matter only to you it matters to god and it matters to us on this platform so i, I I'm, I'm i'm talking about diversity in 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 all kinds of perspective especially for christian women who have been called into frontline leadership those are the women that will open the door for somebody they will they are the women who bring vital roles you know and and initiatives that matter to a woman who's waiting for the door to be opened these initiatives can come as a as as a means of maybe mentorship programs or maybe educational workshops or just advocating for the total well-being of women or maybe you're prof you're the woman called to provide opportunities to open the door for another woman to support and amplify the voice of another woman that's what we've been called to do and so tonight we want to inspire that woman who is making sure um, that other women are elevated. But we also want to celebrate the woman that is making herself visible by all means necessary. Um, we're not talking about ugliness. We're just talking about you being you, being the woman, being the, the girl that God has called you to be. And we're, that's what we want to celebrate tonight, diversity. We want to celebrate what God has called you to do the things that God has assigned for you to do on this side of life. And so as you log on tonight, please jot down in the comment section one name of a woman you want to celebrate. For me tonight, I thought it would be great for me to just celebrate my sisters-in-law, my daughters-in-law, if you like. You know, I just wanted to celebrate them and just say, girls, you're doing a great job out there. So if you know, you are my daughter-in-law. Because if I start calling you or my sister, in law if i start calling you by name you're just gonna say oh you left me out i got so many but i just wanted to celebrate um my 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 in-laws you know or people who have made me to be a woman who's confident called for such a time as this just to celebrate you but i also want to celebrate my sisters my 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 blood sisters i've got amazing blood sisters and i just want to celebrate them and so we're saying you know that woman that you know you want to appreciate put her name down say something nice one woman who has quietly made a difference in your life put her name down let's talk about that and 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 and, and, and appreciate her you know some people don't always have to be from your village for you to appreciate them some people don't have to be from your tribe to appreciate him. God uses the most unusual ways in people to make a difference in our lives. So in case you're wondering, Dr. Mercy, what are you talking about? Let's get on with the program. In case you're wondering, where do I fit in as a woman of faith in this conversation of women empowerment? There are many narratives about a woman wanting to empower herself. Some of them very negative. Um, some of them stereotyped, you know, um, views of International Women's Day. But we are saying, where do we fit in as, as women of faith, as Christian women? For first, let me assure you, women empowerment, International Women's Day is not a plague. It's not a disease. It's not a sin. There is no other book on the planet that provides the most compelling reasons to honor and to celebrate a woman and to cherish her like the Bible does. Throughout the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we see so many significant roles that women occupy, you know, that women have occupied. Jesus himself changed the narrative. He challenged stereotypes. Jesus himself broke the bias and made the world a better place for you and I, so that we do not have to be undervalued. So when you hear somebody say negative things, Maybe they don't have an understanding how the Bible is a compass as for us as women of faith. It is in the Bible, through the word of God, that we now have the modern day Deborahs, the modern day Sarah, the modern day Rebecca, the modern day Rachels, the modern day Hannah, the modern day Esthers, the Marys, the Elizabeth, the daughters of Zelophe. These women all paved the way for you and I. So yes, 
International Women's Day may not have been what it is now during their time, but the concept of sisterhood, of like-mindedness, of advocating for issues that matter to women has always been there. So the truth is, my sisters, Jesus prized you. He prized you. He's always honored women. He's always treasured women. And it's our duty to protect and uphold that worth. It's your duty to uphold that worth, the worth of a woman. And that worth, uphold it so much that you can pass it on to the generations that are following. So to celebrate women, a, a woman, you don't have to look far. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. That woman who is looking back at you, celebrate her, appreciate her, honor her. Tell her you're doing a great job. If no, no one else has told him. Tell her you're doing an amazing job. Tell her you are everything that God has ordained for you to be. Tell her that you are the apple of his eye. Oh, tell her that greatness is in you. That woman you're looking at in the mirror. And you know what? That reflection in the mirror is what God loves. That's who God loves. That's who God is crazy about. That's who God will go to the ends of the earth to make sure that you are okay, that your well-being is okay, that your children are well, that your business is going well, that your ministry is going well. So we celebrate that woman. But I want us to never ever forget that while we are in this place of celebrating, we must never forget that in the midst of that, we also have women who are oppressed, women who are hurting, women who have been denied opportunity to thrive, women who are marginalized, women who are we have limited access to education, women who have limited access to health care, women who are physically, mentally, and sexually violated, women who are victims of human trafficking. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, we have work to do. So celebrating International Women's Day is not a catchy or a social trend. It's a coming together of same minds and same heartbeats and same desires to see a better world for women, to have Christian women like you and I who can boldly advocate for the well-being of a woman mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, spiritually, advocate for the well-being of a woman. And so tonight, we have a panel of great minds, those who have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, women whose stories and experiences will spur you on and encourage you to step up and step out of your containment. So tonight, it's a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce my first speaker. And before she comes on, please say hello in the comment section. Let us know where you're connecting from. If you've just joined us, say hello to somebody. Please share this broadcast. Don't allow anyone in your family, in your bloodline to not hear this conversation. Invite them in, call them in, let them know. Let us know in the comment section. If you're on Facebook, Facebook or YouTube, we welcome you and we love you with the love of God. We are super excited to see you. Let us know how uh, you know how your 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 week has been as you celebrated International Women's Day. Just one word to describe your week of International Women's Day. It's a week of celebrating, like we said, and elevating women and, and making sure that they uh, fulfill their assignment on the side of life. Just one word to describe what your week has been, International Women's Day. So allow me to bring in my first guest. Um, please make sure you use our hashtags in, in the conversation. Our hashtag, our hashtags for this conversation are IWD 2024, hashtag inspire, hashtag empower, hashtag equip, hashtag WF, sorry, W4A. So it's the letter W the figure four and the letter A. That stands for Women for Africa. That will signpost you um, to a great event happening soon. So, and also don't forget hashtag DTM. Please indulge me. Don't forget hashtag DTM. It's a privilege and an honor tonight to introduce my first speaker. Um, what we're doing tonight is we are allowing the speakers to 
directly introduce themselves so that they can articulate their brand and any current projects that or events that they are working on and all that is trending on their side you know um of life i believe you know when you hear direct from the horse's mouth there is no misinterpretation of their vision there is no misinterpretation of their agenda so it's easy to catch the heart when the visionary speaks. So throughout this meeting, we will be posting the speaker social media handles so you can follow them, follow what they're doing, follow their mentorship programs, follow up their events, follow them. There is, there is something powerful about being connected to the right people. And whatever season you're on, whatever season you're in right now, I can assure you, the women on this platform they are worthy of imitation and worthy to be followed by you. Um, so um, for you to follow them. So please allow me and give a keyboard ovation and a warm welcome to my first guest. She's not a stranger. She's not a stranger to us. Um, many of you have seen her beautiful face. You've seen me uh, a few times um, um, I, I don't want to call the word abusing because then you will misinterpret what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but, but she's ever available. Like she's 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 just a girl after my own heart, to be honest. And um, I want you to give her a a you know a resounding keyboard ovation and say welcome, Hilda. Say something nice. You know she's looking glorious for you all tonight. And so I'm gonna hand over to Hilda. Hilda is coming and speaking to us tonight for the next couple of minutes. And so I hand over to you, girl. You take it away. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Messi. Uh, can you just confirm that my sound is good so I can carry on? Your sound is good. Ah, fabulous. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce myself. You 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 did this on purpose, didn't you? Because you you knew that I I would, yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna try this. <laughs> So um, I'm sure most people know me, I'm Hilda Mapeta, and I, I sit currently as the Equip for Excellence uh, coordinator, European coordinator, and I'm also sit as PA to, to, pass, to Dr. Messi. And so I think most of you have seen me traveling with her or on conferences online with her. And, and I'm the one that kind of keeps her in check every now and again, <laughs> which I, I do enjoy that. When I, when I see her overdoing it, I feel that I have been given the privilege to, to look after her welfare and making sure that she's fine and, and she's not overdoing what she's doing and stuff. So, so if you ever see me at a conference giving her, you know, we, we can talk with just eyes and, and, and it's amazing to have that kind of relationship and that kind of trust of knowing that she knows I've got her back and she's got my back. And so... I feel really privileged to be to be speaking on this platform because normally I'm in the background doing stuff. So this is a bit different for me. And um, I think one of the stuff that I, the things that I'm currently doing is I'm in the process of um, becoming a, a, a minister, a lay minister within the Church of England. So I'm in my discernment process at the moment. So um, that's one of the stuff that I am sort of working towards. And uh, another thing that I'm doing, which is something that I, I kind of learned from Dr. Mercy is I'm now a qualified coach. So um, I'm, I'm a qualified coach. I work within NHS. So I'm actually a coach within my hospital that I work in. And so it's, it's one of the things that I'm really passionate about, about empowering people using the, the tools and the skills that I've developed over the years and realizing that I can see a potential in other people and, and kind of signposting people on the things that they can look towards and, you know, just harness that for themselves. So I haven't quite got to a point where I'm publicly doing it out, out, out of my work context, but I think in, in once things level down for me, I might be, it might be something that I will look forward to, to sort of do that under the umbrella of Equip for Excellence, because that's one of the things that we're really passionate about, empowering one woman at a time. And so it, it's quite a good thing that I'm in that, in that, in that sort of area. So I think that's the only introduction I can give myself. Yeah. And do you want me to just carry on into my talk or straight away, or you want to do some other introductions? No, straight into your talk, please. Thank you. Talk. That's good. So I'll I'll get straight into my talk. Um, when Dr. Messi asked me to to come and share on this platform on this day, 
I'm, I am someone that's really passionate. As a woman, I am passionate about other women. And I I found myself um, sitting and thinking, what can I talk about? And and I, I say to Dr. Mess, I wanted to talk about how we transition in pain. How do we transition our lives when we're going through pain? And this is something that I felt it was something that was close to my heart because I've had those, there's some painful experiences that I've gone through that have made me into the woman that I am today because of how I had to transition myself into that space. And I think a lot of, maybe a lot of people can relate to me to say, you know, there, there, there can be some times when you sit in that presence, when you sit in God's presence and you've got such a heavy heart and and it's even hard to pray and it's even, and you're tired, you're disappointed, you're frustrated, you're grieving. And, and sometimes you don't even know where to start from except to say, God, but why, why me? Why, what, when can I catch a break? When, when, when is things gonna, gonna change? And in those moments, there's some things that I've realized that I, I needed to learn, I needed to up my, my praying game. And it was so hard to do that, but, Another thing that I felt as well was actually to this morning, what was quite interesting was I had something completely planned to what I was going to talk about. And God reminded me this morning as I was taking a shower at half six in the morning to go to work about when you when you're about to give birth, when you have a child and you're about to give birth and you're going to labor and you're having contractions and when I had my first son who who turned 24 last week. I remember thinking when I was in labor with Dylan, because I was a new mom, I'd never gone through that experience before. I thought I'm going to die. This pain, I was in, I was a 20 year old having a baby. I don't know what business I had having a baby at that time, but I was struggling and I was in pain and I did not think that that pain would go away. I thought, and, but another thing that I had, because I had been told so many stories about how much child labor is, how much contractions are going to hurt. So whilst I wanted to cry of the pain I was experiencing at the time, I didn't cry because I kept thinking, if I cry now, what if it gets worse? What's going to happen? If I cry now, when it gets worse, what's going to happen? Right until the time that the nurses said, we can see the head, you need to push now, you need to push. And then I started fighting with them, not wanting to push because it was so painful. But the moment I pushed that child out, that pain stopped. That pain just was just gone. And, and that's something that I felt God kind of dropped into my spirit today that we can go through a period of pain. And sometimes you can sit there and think, but how much more of this can I take? And someone else, and I can, you can go and talk to someone else that's going through the same pain, the same through experience. And then they'll say, you know what? What you need to do is you need to pray. You need to read your words. You need to do this. But man, I can't even read the word. I don't even have the strength to read the word. I don't even have the strength to pray. And 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 you get to that point where you 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 feel like some people, you know, some some Christians are very strong in knowing how to to sit there and pray, or you know, have the right encouragement, you have the right words to say to you. And I found myself really struggling to be that kind of Christian woman that understood that God loved me so much. And that I even through this pain, he is with me in that. And to some degree, I knew that God was present, but I also needed to believe it for myself. And it was something that was really hard. And it was almost like God was trying to remind me today by reminding me about my contractions and the labor to say, just because you are now in a place where you've now understood what childbirth, what you go through in childbirth. There's someone else that hasn't experienced what childbirth is like. And there's someone else that might never experience what childbirth is like. But the pain of someone experiencing childbirth for the first time or the second time will never be the same as how you experienced it. But we, when we transition ourselves out of that pain, out of that process, there's, there's a healing that happens and our healing happens in different ways. Some people will have the baby and not struggle with any pain, but they'll have post postnatal depression. And I will have pain delivering the baby and I will not have any postnatal depression. And, and so God was just saying, when we when we are helping each other, when we're talking to each other as women, whether you're at work, whether you know in life, 
when we experience certain experiences, certain painful experiences, we need to get to the point where we become our each other's keeper, our sister's keepers, and we don't become our sister's judge judges. So, you know, like I remember when during that time before I had my child, people would say, uh, wait for it. You will see this is going to happen. So people were talking to me about the pain based on their experiences. And I formed a narrative based on their experiences, but not on my experience. And God was trying to remind me today that when you go through a season of pain, form your narrative from my perspective. Don't form your narrative based on another person. Because how I'm going to sell you through out of that and how I'm going to sell that person out of that, it's going to be on different levels. Because what Dr. Messi can handle with the threshold that she can handle is the different threshold I can handle. But I can still maneuver you out of that pain, out of that season. And I think, and, and when I get you out of that season, when you go and testify about how, how good, how good God is, you will have a different story. From, from Dr. Messi, you will have a different story from Pastor Docas, you'll have a different story from Tola, because even though we could all go through the same experience that is painful, possibly to the same level, but how God transitions us out of it, what God brings out, out of us is, is, two, is completely different things. And it made me realize that, um, you know, when you go, I, I recently had a story about when you go where they refine silver, the amount of work that's go that goes through into the refining of silver until it becomes that piece of silver that you see, you can have a white gold ring. It will go through that pro a certain process. When you refine gold, it also goes through a different refining process. But the end result is still a magnificent piece of jewelry that you want to wear. That is shining. That is that is that is so beautiful. And you and you. Some people say, "Oh, I think my hand looks nice with silver." And someone says, "Oh, mine looks nice in gold." But we are still wearing a piece of jewelry that is shining. That is gold. But the process that those two different things I've had to go through to, to come out to the outer, to the product that you all admiring is a different product. And I, and, and the other thing that I feel God has been saying is as we, as we grow, as we are growing, I have a 23 year old daughter and, and a 24 year old son, how they process life is completely different from how I would do things. We talk about, we talk with my kids and they say, my daughter said, I'm 23. At your, at your age, mom, you had two kids and you were a single mom trying to make life work. Half the time, I don't know where my shoes are. I don't know where my where I left my, my my house keys. I'm phoning you to say, please, can you stay awake so I can get in the house? Because I don't know where I put my, my house keys. But you had to make sure we got to school. We had food. We got dressed. Everything was done. And, and I felt that this is the stage where as we... As we as we move in our life as as women with International Women's Day today, it's about acknowledging that even if we go through the same pain or the same processes or the same structures of life, we need to be able to be in a position where we become our sisters' keepers and not our sisters' judges. And that's something that I was just really sensing in my heart that. God really wants us to look after each other, to really support each other, to really love each other out of whatever situation that we are in. You know, there's um, in, there's a psalm that I really like, which is Psalms 40. It, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and my, my. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. And wouldn't it be wonderful for us to encourage each other knowing that even if we go through anything, some of us will have, I didn't, I knew this some um, during my period of pain and trying to maneuver around life, but this didn't apply. This didn't make any sense. But I, what I needed was what I got. I still have it up to now in my Bible. So a friend of mine, whilst we were in a church service and I was sitting there thinking, God, this is too much for me. I don't know how to handle this. I don't know how to get myself out of this place that I am. And how do I, how am I, how is life going to work out? How is things going to be? God, will things ever change for me? Will I ever 
will, will I ever just go through life so easy? And this was in July 2017. And a friend of mine from church who didn't know what I was going through, God was, was listening. And, and, and that's when I go back to that Psalms, one, Psalms 40, because I was crying out to God in my, in my head, confused and in pain. And my friend wrote this and she says, Hilda, your confidence is his faithfulness. He has taken you this far. He's got so much more in store for you. You are enough. Love, Claire. She had no idea what I was going through. But for that day, she became my she became the keeper of my heart in the sense that she listened to what the Holy Spirit was giving her. And, and I just feel just to encourage each other as women that if we if we are to listen to the Holy Spirit and say, God, would you give me? And when I uh, when I spoke to her a few years later, because we're still in the same church, and I asked her and I said, What made you write that note to me? Because I didn't tell you what I was going through. And she said that Sunday when she walked into church. That morning she prayed and she said, God, would you let me sit to someone that's brokenhearted, that really wants to know that you are still faithful and you're still present? And would you give me the right words to say to them? She didn't say, God, can you make me sit next to Hilda? Can you make me have a word for Hilda? No, she said, God, would you let me reach out to that person that's brokenhearted, that's losing faith in you, that's feeling like this is it, this is done. I, I can't take it anymore. I just want to reach out to them with the right words of affirmation for them to acknowledge and to know that whatever season they're going into, it's time for them to let go and surrender back to you. And I, and I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that Psalm, that Psalm 40 says, if you wait patiently for the Lord, he will hear your cry. I needed to hear that, but I just didn't know how to I knew what I knew that scripture existed, but I needed someone to ignite that to remind me that I was enough, that I was important, that I was, I was, I was, I was there, and that someone knew that somewhere in, in the depths of all that's going wrong, there's still a confidence that's inside me that I'd forgotten that I had. And and I just feel as we as we transition, as we move into this year with a lot of stuff that's gonna that's happening within the world, and you know, people putting each other down on social media, people making videos of 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 talking down on others and making fun of others how about we turn it around and make a movement about encouraging each other identifying the things that people do great in and 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 and, and single them out and, and mention them that you know you do great in this and and identify and ask God to say you know God would you show me where there's pain so I can go and sit in that space and feel my, my my positiveness and my confidence in that person because I know that day I was scared I was frustrated I was angry and and I kept saying God why but why why do things have to keep happening for me in this way God would you just show me that you're still there before I I let this all go and God should and God turned up in that in that space for me and if he could do it for me, he would do it for the next person. He would do it for the next person. And if God could speak to Claire to speak to me, God can speak to Dr. Messi to speak to someone else, to someone else. And, and, and it becomes a positive cycle of just positive things just happening. And, and so that's just what I really wanted just to share is to say that, you know, if we know that when we wait patiently for God, he will hear us. He, he had my cry. He will lift us out of the slimy pit and he will set your foot on a rock and he will give you a, fame, a firm place to stand. Because I'm not saying I haven't gone through pain again in my life. I have. But oh, that firm rock that he gave me to stand on has remained the rock that I stand on even up to today has become the reminder that shows me that I can still stand. I can still, I can still walk in confidence even if Things is things are not going the way they should. God will carry on sustaining me to the place that He wants me to be at. Amen. Wow, what an awesome, awesome start! I mean, I could hear the preacher woman coming out. I could hear the preacher woman. I'm like, okay, okay, let's go. My goodness, thank you so much, Hilda. Transitioning from pain. You've done justice to that um, to that topic. 
forming your own narrative according to God's, you know, form your narrative according to God's narrative. You see, life can hit us and beat us so bad. Life can throw us a curveball and we can be so discouraged to the extent where we begin to lose, um, you know, confidence in what God's narrative is about us. So as we go on with this program, be assured that God's narrative of you is what matters. But do you know what God's narrative is of you? If you think you know what God's narrative is of you, put it in the chat box, put it in the comment section. Let us know. Just give us a clue. What does God, what, what's God's narrative of you on this International Women's Day 2024? What is God saying? Maybe God is saying you're the apple of his eye. Maybe you hear God saying, you know, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Maybe you hear God saying, I'm not done with you yet. I'm taking you further. Maybe you hear God saying, I, I see a CEO in you. Maybe you hear God saying, I see a mighty woman of valor in you. Whatever it is that God is saying to you on this International Women's Day, let it be his narrative and not the world's narrative, not social media's narrative. My goodness, thank you so much, Hilda. I love what you said. You said, becoming your sister's keeper, not your sister's judge. That one just made me stop a minute. Thank you, Hilda. I think we're going to have, We we I, I see and I feel like, there's a book coming out of this. This is, a, this is an absolutely amazing topic, which I feel has come from the very depth of your life experiences. And so this will be, a, you know, a really, a really amazing read. Think about it. Um, Claire was your keeper in terms of your heart, in terms of watching and observing where you were at in the realm of the spirit and then she she said a word she said a prayer she was available may god make available to us women who can come alongside us you know women who can genuinely sincerely love us and i love how you ended is firm rock is christ himself to stand on sometimes the things we are standing on sometimes the ground we are standing on is really a very shaky ground and we are standing on sinking ground sometimes the ground that we've made for ourselves we don't even know whether we we're standing on the right ground so thank you so much hilda that was an amazing presentation um thank you for taking the time and just doing what god's called you to do you know and you've done it well but before i bring my next speaker please just say thank you thank you hilda i want to see your thank yous your appreciation creations online thank you so much i can see we have um we have amazing uh, people who are joining online right now if you could share the broadcast please share it with friends share it with family the women on this platform have been called for such a time as the wisdom they have wisdom for your business wisdom wisdom for your family wisdom for your ministry wisdom for your assignment wisdom for your brand it's all here tonight so share this a broadcast don't let anyone miss out on 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 this tonight um we've got a few people just to thank the women of god who have come on the platform thank you so much your time is spoken for but you're here tonight we appreciate you um woman of god primrose kurima thank you so much we appreciate you thank you for being here tonight thank you pastor mercy watching all the way from zimbabwe we thank you we appreciate you uh kuda watching all the way i think kuda, kuda is in south africa thank you so much i saw you a minute ago thank you so much for being there um siang 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 so thank you so much i hope i've pronounced that right um um Siangli so thank you so much for being here we appreciate you we love you fayola mataranika thank you so much we can see you on and um you know we thank you we appreciate you woman of god simba chidarainzi thank you so so much we appreciate you, Lynn. Thank you for being here. Thank you for logging on. And everyone who is coming in, we appreciate you. We also see the man of God, Mr. Sh um, Pastor Charles Shubambiri. You're logged on. We appreciate you. Thank you for logging on and being part of the of this um, of this conversation. We're excited tonight because the women on this program have been called for such a time as this, and we are excited that um, you know um, they've got they've got the equipment. Sometimes all you need is someone who's got the right equipment for where you're going, for what you want to do in life. 
it's about the equipment. It's about it getting hold, grabbing the equipment, that thing that you know will take you to your next, um, you know, to your next level. So please share the broadcast, share our our, our hashtags for to for tonight make sure somebody somewhere someone somewhere out there is is being motivated and is hearing and and is going to be part of this so please share it and um appreciate someone else for plugging in and making sure that they are on here tonight our hashtag is as I said, is hashtag IWD2024, hashtag inspire, hashtag empower, hashtag equip, hashtag DTM, and hashtag W4A. That's Women for Africa, if you look that up. So thank you so much. Our, our next guest is coming on. And as I said, um, I'm allowing our guests to introduce themselves so they can articulate properly everything that is happening in their lives they can tell us about their current projects they can tell us about the current events things that are happening in their lives and and where they are at and and they can they can direct us in the right way in terms of their brand um you know things that they are doing and it's a privilege to be able to have these ladies with me tonight and it's um it's a great honor for the first time on our platform you know on candid talk one of the things God has assigned and has instructed is to is to make sure that we bring um, women who are not um, intimidated by situations of life, women who, who are not um, afraid to say and, and speak, um, you know, the reality of things happening on the ground, women who are in the communities, they know the pain, they know the, they know the, the challenges happening in communities, but they also have the solutions. They have the wisdom of God in them. And so tonight is a privilege, it's an honor uh, for me to introduce our next guest. She's a beloved sister. I've, I've known her for so many, many, many years. And I have seen her stand and just be the same person and never waver. I've seen the grace of God operating in her life. If you don't know much about her tonight, you will. Um, this woman... Is, is a woman who took Zimbabwe by storm. I grew up uh, just literally just tapping into her grace. So it's a pleasure and an honor tonight to bring, um, to candid to talk on Equip for Excellence platform. And this is not the last you hear of her. She's here tonight um, and um, she will be speaking to us on a very sensitive topic. She will be speaking to us on challenging stereotypes. And my God, my God, tonight you are in for a good ride please buckle up it might get bumpy so pastor docus listen it's a pleasure and an honor to have you um take it away introduce yourself tell us a little bit about who is duchess d thank you thank you pastor mercy thank you for having me tonight i am pastor docus by profession i'm a broadcast journalist and um Currently, I do immigration work where I do case working and interpreting. I'm also attached to an organization that um, helps women fleeing domestic violence. I do train people that want to do public speaking. I call it voice training, though I'm doing that on a very minimal level because of um, the pressure of work. Yeah, my topic on challenging stereotypes. Um, one thing I must say is, uh, for the greater part of my life, I was a broadcaster. I presented news both on radio and on television, as well as helped uh, train prospective presenters for both radio and um, television in my country of origin, which is Zimbabwe. Um, I never ever imagined in my wildest dream that I would switch from broadcasting at, at some point um, become part of ministry and um, this did happen so what i want to say is uh stereotyping is rife because firstly when i joined ministry i was a divorced woman and i got married to a man of god so that's how i entered into ministry 
So obviously the stereotyping was quite um, rife because I didn't quite uh, fit, you know, the status of being a pastor's wife, having uh, been through a failed marriage. So obviously there were challenges there, but uh, for some reason, God has given me one great tool in my life and that is confidence. I may get shattered, but I have this airbag. I'm sure you know them, they are in cars. So once that pops open, I am good to go. And my life as a single mom, for a greater part, uh, taught me a lot of things. And I have a lot of passion for women that are raising children on their own, for women that have been through or are going through divorce, because I, I can say I sat where they are currently sitting. So I'm in a position to speak to them fairly and not judge them as um, Hilda was saying that let's learn uh, to be a sister's keeper and not to judge. So I found it hard, especially when I started with ministry because all the comments and what people felt qualified somebody to be a pastor's wife kept ringing in my head. I mean, I am human, but I eventually did manage to slowly um, realize that God doesn't call the qualified, but God will qualify you when he calls you. And I also realized that my career as a broadcaster was God's way of preparing me where he knew he was going to take me, that I needed the skill, I needed the ability to communicate. And thus my skill as a broadcaster is God given. I get people that come up and ask me, how do I do it? How do I do this? But honestly, sometimes this is really a gift. And sometimes I cannot really explain to somebody to say, do this or do that. So stereotyping is found in so many areas of life. And, you know, stereotyping is really uh, somebody's opinion of you or somebody's opinion of where they think you belong. But God is no respecter of person. God can use anybody. So don't allow anybody to shrink you and make you feel, oh, you don't qualify for this and you don't qualify for that. Because if God could take a broadcaster who was looked upon as, I don't know whether I can put myself in somebody who's in the circular world because broadcasting and ministry are just two different things. But God can use whoever he, he wishes. So this was part of the journey uh, I had been through. And that's my desire to work with women. My desire led me to join an organization that takes care and caters for women that are fleeing uh, domestic abuse. So what I will do is they will call me in and I can make an assessment of what that person's requirements may be. And if that particular organization is not able to offer everything, we pinpoint the lady, uh, the places that she needs to uh, look into. And if she's got children, that's an additional thing that we, we need to look at. So all I can say is stereotyping has been in existence and will continue to be there, but we need to stand up. And as women, let us learn to work together. Sometimes it is us as women who bring each other down. Let us learn to work together. Let us celebrate what God is doing in another woman's life. Because if God can pick um, somebody and put them into ministry, it is God's choice. Don't let anybody talk you down into what you're hearing God tell you that you should be doing. We've got women in the Bible, women like Deborah. She was a judge and a prophetess. And during that time, I think those were areas that were male dominated, but she held that post and did exceptionally well. So as women, let us be 
Deborahs in our generation, Deborahs to our families, Deborahs to our communities, and Deborahs everywhere else we go. So the greatest thing is don't hold back. Do not be hesitant. If God has called you to do something, just know that God will help you. God will stand with you. Do not be afraid because our God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So do what you need to get done. People are going to have an opinion and everybody is entitled to have an opinion, but you do not have to entertain their opinion. It's their way of thinking and not yours. So hold on to what God has asked you to do. Each and every one of us that is upon this earth, we have a purpose. That housewife who is at home, she's got a purpose. Let's not put you know, other women into categories. We all belong together. And as for, for as long as we stick together, we are going to be able to fight a lot of battles together because we can get policies changed. We can get so many laws put into place if we stand together. And if we do not point fingers about who doesn't belong, where they belong, or who shouldn't be doing this, it is God who decides who goes where and who does what. So it has been a journey for me, but um, I realized that my skill as a broadcaster was preparing me for what was going to come years and years later. So ladies, let us learn to love one another. And I'll just repeat and echo again my sister's statement. Let us be a sister's keeper, not a sister's judge because we need to love on us, love on each other. And I also pray, you know, even in the churches, I think there's need for more, um, I don't know whether to call it openness, but I think there is a level of stereotyping of who shouldn't do this. I mean, the Bible does not categorize women. Women are women. And there's no section that says this type of woman belongs here. That single mom cannot be there. This one cannot be there. God calls us women. And as we celebrate International Women's Day, that's what it should be about. We are all women. And God loves each and every one of us. So get up and do what you believe God is asking you to do. Do not be held back because of that negativity that stereotyping. We've had women that have broken glass ceilings. We've got pilots. We've got... I'm sure those women had to do so much. They must have feared, but they kept pushing. So this is what it is. If you're going to get somewhere, if you're going to do what you want to do, there are going to be obstacles. And sometimes that very obstacle is what is, what is setting you up. That is your platform that is going to elevate you, that very same thing that you are fearing. So as we celebrate women this week, I just want to say, go out there, do what you need to do, love on yourself, and let's celebrate ourselves as women. Thank you, Pastor Missy. Pastor Dorcas, Duchess, my goodness. I couldn't write fast enough. Um, what an amazing presentation. Thank you. I don't know if you guys um if you guys know, but um Pastor D has been has been a source of inspiration to a, a, you know quite a, a a number of generations um in, in the in the in the communities of I think Zimbabwe and Zambia because I think originally um that's where she's from and um she she has she has broken the glass ceiling and paved the way in phenomenal ways and pastor Dorcas, one of the things that i personally have been edified with to, today has been the issue of you saying 
you have an airbag. Now that, that speaks to me on so many levels of inspiration because yes, you get shattered. Yes, you get pulled down. Yes, ugliness may come your way. Yes, you may lose a child. You could lose a spouse. You could, you could, you could lose a business and perhaps you could even lose a ministry, but use your airbag. There is a reason why the airbag is there. It sustains you, it preserves you, it will protect you. My goodness. I thought that we could, we could, we could have gone church right there, woman of God. Single women going through divorce, women who are raising children on their own, or even men who are raising children on their own. This is a message for you. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies you in that role that God has called you to be. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Duchess. My goodness. You say, don't allow anyone to shrink you. Mm -mm. Don't allow anyone. This is a message for somebody. Listen, if you're on this broadcast right now and you know a girlfriend or you know another lady, you know a sister, you know an aunt, you know a mom, you know somebody who has who, who who has had greatness in them but they're being shrunk because of the comments that are being made or the stereotype or their current situation call them on this program they've got to be here they've got to listen to this my god and you know what i i work in the same industry as, as Pastor Dorcas, where I work with victims of human trafficking, victims of domestic violence, women who are looking for refuge, and we're signposting them in the right direction. You know, we are we are we are we are we are trying to help as much as we can. But at the end of the day, it's the narrative that Jehovah God has on you. Your what is that narrative that God has on you? My my goodness, you say, don't let anyone talk you down for what God has called you to do, Pastor Dorcas. Mm -mm. And for sure, you said, God will help you, God will stand with you. I'm gonna let you go, Pastor Dorcas, but my goodness, we'll come back later on. Maybe the three of us, um, the, the, the three guest speakers and myself, just to kind of like if we have any questions that the, the audience may have, if time is um is 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 permitting but thank you so so much duchess um Dorcas. you know you said your skill as a broadcaster was preparing you for the assignment that is at hand right now how how how, how phenomenal is that because many times in our lives when we do stuff we think we're just doing it we think we 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 are we are we are just you know um going about our business not realizing that there is a mark on our lives. God has called us, signposted us towards something. And sometimes what we are doing may actually just be the elevator to the thing that God has called us to do. Pastor Dorcas, what can I say? But thank you so much. I can see the comments are coming up. Thank you so much. If you are on this broadcast and you haven't shared it yet, yet you are not doing yourself justice. Share it with somebody bring someone on tell them listen you've got to hear this conversation you've got to be here you've got to hear this conversation and um i i want to to try and bring my, our our um our next guest um she's um she's our last guest on tonight um but no means the list um we are we are going to just have a moment to maybe ask you to share before she comes on share the broadcast share our hashtags signpost somebody to our hashtags um take a moment to share and if you've got anything particularly that you have experienced during this week of international women's day maybe it could be a challenge it could be something to celebrate it could be a success whatever it is post it in the comment section we'll find it we'll see it and we will we will you know um we'll give you a shout out and hear what's going on and um mm -hmm. we've got people who have connected thank you so much for connecting and making sure that you're part of this conversation we appreciate you and like i said earlier it's a privilege hearing direct introductions from our guest speakers i say that because the visionary knows how to articulate 
their brand, their purpose, their vision, and any current projects that they have and events that are working, that they are working on. Listen, keep your ear to the ground. Those women, I want you to be able to follow them. I want you to follow the things that they are doing, the different projects that they're doing. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want you to be left behind. We don't bring this International Women's Day, just so that we can be, you know, a, a loud noise in your devices. We bring it because we are assured that there is an assignment on your life and you have a purpose on this side of life. And we want you to grab hold of that purpose. We want you to be able to, you know, to fulfill purpose and do everything God has called you to do on this side of life. So too much talking, uh, Dr. Mercy. I'm going to bring um, our next guest. She's not new to our platform. Many of you have requested for her to come back. So really, honestly, she does come back um, by public demand, to be honest. And um, many of you will say, oh, I wasn't able to log into the program when you were doing the broadcast, but my God, I listened to it afterwards. My goodness, I took notes. My goodness, I was inspired. My God, I'm gonna do this. My God, I'm gonna do that. And that's lovely. Yes, you may not be able to be, um, you know, on the broadcast on the day that we are we are streaming it, but you will listen to this. You will hear this later on. Many people will hear it and it will go places. And the reason we say that is because I've had feedback from you. Every time Toller is on the program, my goodness, you guys, you come into my inbox. And then I always say, I signpost you to the things that she's doing. So tonight, it's a privilege and an honor to have have Tola Onibanjo back on our screens, back into our homes, back into, into our space to again enlighten us, bring wisdom, bring understanding, signpost us in the right way to do life, the practicalities of what we ought to be doing. And um, tonight she's coming, she's speaking to us on a very, very um, sensitive topic as well, which I feel we need to hear. She's speaking to us on being transformers and not conformers, my goodness. And then we're gonna allow uh, Tola to tell us a little bit about the event coming up. And then you're going to get online and then you're gonna buy that ticket, buy that table, and have an absolutely awesome time because you could be the next one winning this uh, award. But I won't say too much because I think I will misrepresent. Um, Mrs. Onipanjo, over to you, ma'am. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Mercy. Thank you. That intro had me laughing. <laughs> oh, it's not an intro. You. <laughs> you have to introduce. You have to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Soon to be Pastor Hilda for your message. And thank you, Pastor Dorcas, as well. Thank you. You ladies shared amazing messages. Thank you. And thank you once again, Pastor Mercy, for inviting me on. It's always a privilege to be here. Um, my name is Toloni Banjo. Um, people know me as Wise Toller. And um, I am the founder of Women for Africa. Women for Africa is an annual awards where we celebrate and elevate ordinary women who are doing extraordinary things. This year, we'll be celebrating 10 years of Women for Africa. So we are celebrating 10 phenomenal women this year. And also it's a celebration of all our previous winners the last nine years as well. So we are inviting people to come and be a part of that day. Yeah, 10 promises to be spectacular. We have so many surprises in store. Early bird tickets are still available and um, we expect it to be, you know, like um, like no other. Uh, that's coming up in May, but it's a two day event. So we'll have the empowerment, the Women for Africa Empowerment Summit on the Friday. And then we have the awards on the Saturday. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I also do a number of things, but um, I'm all about women. I'm all about women empowerment. I'm also the founder of The Solid Woman. I believe every woman is a solid woman in her own right. You know, so <laughs> that is that. And I'm also an author. I'm author of the book called Steps, you know, a guide to successful step parenting. And I touched on all aspects of parenting in that book, but I wrote it from a step parent perspective as well but I believe parenting is parenting. The only difference is the word step. And I believe when people, when people embrace that word step, they can embrace it to mean a step back, a step away, you know, like, and that, and not want to do the whole parenting thing because it's not their child, but remove the step 
and just parent. That's me. You know, like you go into a relationship, you take on the kids. Those are your kids' parents. So I always say I'm a mother of five children because I count my stepdaughter as one of my own. So I don't say I'm a mother of four children and one stepchild. I say I'm a mother of five children and I'm a grandmother of four, you know, and I happily embrace that role. So today I was asked to talk on transforming, not conforming. And I, I'm so happy it's it's candid talk tonight. So I'm going to be candid <laughs> with my talk. And I'm going to say, when I, when I first became a Christian, I had a very big issue with not conforming. It was very hard for me. I mean, I, I absolutely enjoyed and loved the journey that I was on. But then there was always that, mm, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm being too radical with my faith. I don't want to seem like, so, so sometimes you'll try and dumb down, you know, like your religion, your Christianity, your walk and everything, because you don't want to be seen as overdoing it. But little did I realize that I was conforming, I was conforming and not transforming until I understood the concept of transforming fully. So the text, I'm taking my teaching, my talk tonight from the text, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. And I'm going to read the new, I'm going to read the King James version, and then I'm going to read the Passion Translation as well. And it reads, I beseech, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but ye be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Passion Translation reads that as, beloved friends, what should, you, what should be our, prosper, our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? to surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Today, I'm going to talk about the way of transformation. And when we look at that, to those two verses in Romans, we see that there's a process and there's a progression when it comes to transformation. And I'm going to try and touch on these four points. When I talk about the process and the, the, the progress, there's number one, the process of transformation. And that is in verse one, which is to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Then there's the opposition of transformation, which is to be conformed. Then there's the proof of transformation, which is the renewed mind. And then there's the result of transformation, which will be the will of God which is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I want to talk about the process, the process of tra transformation. That scripture says, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. When Paul talked about that, he, he Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he said, present your bodies, i.e. offer yourself dedicate all of yourself as a living sacrifice unto God. Live it, that means to live according to his purpose for your life. That's how we present our bodies. How you present your bodies is, you know, like, you know whether, whether you're presenting it because you're presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him, or whether you're living for the world. Are you yielded to him? Or are you yielded to the world? We present our bodies as a living sacrifice by living a life that is yielded to God and not the world, fully dedicated to his purpose and not our own purpose. That's how we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. That is the process of transformation. Now, when you look at the opposition of transformation, that's being conformed to the world. 
that's wanting to fit into what the world is doing, adjusting to what the world is doing, as well as trying to serve and live for God. The Bible says, and be not conformed to this world. The problem with anything and the solution to anything is always in the definition. Now, if the definition is wrong, the understanding will be wrong, the activation will be wrong, and the result will be wrong. If the definition is right, the understanding will be right, the activation will be right, and the result will be right. It's all in the definition. So it's very important that we always have the right definition of whatever it is that we are going, what that we are looking into. So if we look at the definition of conformed, the definition of conformed means to be shaped or patterned into a particular mold. That's the definition of being conformed. In this context, Paul was saying to us, do not be conformed to this world, i.e., do not be moldy. Do not be conformed into this mold, world, which is the mold. So he's saying, do not be shaped or patterned into the shape of the world. The world has how it wants us to be as women. The world has how it expects us to be as women. But we're not going to be conformed to what the world says. Our objective is transformation. So we're not shaping, we're not being shaped to the system to the mentality or to the way of the world. No, that's not what we've been called to be. We've been called to be transformed. And don't get me wrong, there are so many things that will present to us throughout life, every day on a daily basis, whether it's through the TV, whether it's through social media, whether it's through people that will want to try and get us to conform, that will try and get us to know you can't do that. No, it's never been done. No, it shouldn't be done like that. It has to be like done like this. So many things that will want to get us to try and conform to the world system, to how the world wants us to be. But we always have to remember that we've been, we've been called to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And that's how we present ourselves as that living sacrifice. Now, also the proof of transformation, the proof of transformation, it says be transformed by the renewing of the mind. The message of transforming, not conforming, is all about the mind. We renew our mind. That's how, we, when we renew our mind, that's how we continually are being transformed. And it's in the renewal of our mind. Transform. Transform in the Greek meaning means metamorphosis. It's an outward permanent change as a result of an inward reality. We are transformed when the mind is renewed. When the mind is renewed, the soul gets transformed. We have to remember that when we're born again, we're recreated, new spirit. We've been given, but the mind is not recreated. The mind now has to be renewed to catch up to what has been, what has taken place with our recreated spirit. So we renew our mind by the word and we continue to renew our mind because we're continually transforming. As the world is trying to get us to conform, we need to be constantly be transforming. And that's how we renew our mind by going deeper into the word, deeper into the word. We feed ourselves on the word. We feed ourselves on what the word says. That's how we're able to go against what the world wants us to. And in throughout the Bible, there's stories, there's loads of stories of people that did not conform. And since it's International Women's Day, I want to just highlight Esther. Esther told her people, and she said, and me and my maidservants, we will go and fast. And then she will go before the king, something that is not done, something that is even against the law. She will go against the king. And she said, if I perish, I perish. But she, Esther could have easily said, this is the law. You don't do that. It's not done. Nobody goes before the king unless the king calls him. But Esther was not prepared to be conformed. Esther was ready to go before the king, go against what the, what the norm was, go against the system, go against the mentality of the world and say, if I perish, I perish. And Esther was able to save her people by not conforming. And there are loads of examples of that in the Bible, loads and loads. The result of transformation is that we are able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the father. To be conformed is like a good idea. Oh, it's good to do this. Oh, it's good because everyone is doing that. But to be transformed is God's way. That's God's idea. And we know the one that we want to go with. 
a transformed mind that proves what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of the father, not the permissive, but the perfect will of the father. And we know that God's will for us is that we are transformed. So we have our part to play. We have our part to play when society wants to say, oh, you're meant to be like this. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, you can't do that. It's our transformation and the renewing of our mind that lets us know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's our renewed mind that lets us know that there is nothing that we cannot do because with God, all things are possible. It's our renewed mind that lets us know that greater is he that is in us. And knowing that the greater one is in you, it gives you the boldness and the courage. For the Bible says, be bold, be courageous. And that's what the renewed mind allows us to be. Knowing that we can stand bold and courageous because of him. And because of what he has said in his word. So in conclusion, I want to say, for our life to be transformed, our thoughts must be informed. A thought that is not informed is a thought that is conformed. And a thought that is conformed is a thought that is deformed. So we know that we have to have that renewed mind. We know that we have to have that renewed mind in order to be transformed. Finally, Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are praiseworthy whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of a good report it's always all those good things if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things think on those things the bible has already told us the things to think on so why would we want to think of on anything that god has not said that we should think on and that's how we transform and we renew our mind by thinking on the things that are pure, thinking on the things that are lovely. For God so loved his, the world, he gave his only begotten son. What a great gift that we have been given. Why would I want to think about anything else other than that? In that gift, he has given us everything, salvation, redemption, everything he's given us. Why do I want to think on anything else? When the world is saying, oh, the cost of living is going up, people are going to be struck. Why do I want to think on that? When God has said he shall supply all my need. Why do I want to think on what they're saying in the news? Why do I want to think on that? Let me think on what the word has said. Let us think on what the word has said and let's renew our mind. And it's a daily process. It's not something that you can do as a one-off. It's a daily thing because something else will happen the next day to challenge you. But you renew your mind. You renew your mind with what the word has said. You renew your mind with what the word has said and you don't you do not conform to what is being said. You do not conform to what the world is saying. But you be transformed by the renewing of your mind and we renew our mind by feeding our mind with the word. The same way that our body needs clothes, our, our feet need shoes, our belly needs food is the same way our mind needs to be renewed with the word. So we continue to feed our minds with the word. When you feed your mind with the word, that is the way of transformation. You transform, you do not conform. So without taking up too much time, that is my message in a nutshell. The way that you keep transforming, because transformation is a process. It's not a one-off, it's a process. And the way you keep transforming is by renewing your mind. And renewing your mind helps you not to conform because why it helps you to transform. And we know what we renew our mind with. We renew our mind with the word. It's not with the news. It's not with what the papers say. We renew our mind with the word and what the father says. That's how we renew our mind. And it allows us not to conform. So thank you once again, Pastor Mercy, for inviting me and allowing me to share my little bit. And once again, I want to say that when you gave me that topic, I reached out to a pastor friend of mine and I said to him, Pastor ID, I'm speak I've been asked to speak on this topic by my friend, Dr. Mercy. Do you have any tips? And he shared with me some tips. So I just want to thank him also for sharing some of the tips of this message as well with me, because it has not been 
And like I said at the beginning, it has not been a journey of transformation for me from the start, from the moment I got saved. It's a continuous journey, a continuous journey, because there are so many things that will present itself that will want to get you to conform. But your mind has to be renewed. Your mind has to be renewed so that you can be transformed and live that good and be able to live that life that he has called you to live in him and through him. Thank you so much. Wow. I did not see that coming. <laughs> My goodness. I, I did not see that coming. Okay. So many of you will have heard, um, you know, Tola speak and share and, and coach on different, on different topics. But today she came wearing a completely different hat and I loved it, absolutely loved it. You know, sometimes we have a process, things that go on in our lives and we don't understand what is happening with the process. Thank you so much for being so open and, and, and bringing understanding to someone's life and to the audience also, because you know, sometimes when we look at certain individuals, we don't perceive they ever had any issues or any problem of of or issue of conforming and 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 how what was the transformation that happened in their life? It feels like they've always been like that, you know? And sometimes we 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 sell a narrative out there that makes people think we we've always been like that. But thank you for being so open and being so um being so plain and being so candid about your presentation. I loved it. I loved, you've got to say this again. If the definition is wrong and if the definition is right, just give that what give that back to us again. You say that the definition has got to be, it's about the definition. And you 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 narrated it in a very um you know wise way can you just give that back to us again you said if the definition is wrong then <laughs> if the definition is wrong the understanding will be wrong the activation will be wrong the ah, result will be wrong Hilda you've got to catch that and put it on <laughs> you've got to catch that and if the definition is right if the definition is right the understanding will be right the activation will be right and then the result will be right my goodness, woo, woo, woo. This is a completely different and amazing International Women's Day, um, you know, broadcast. We are not shaped um, by the systems of the world. We can't conform to the world system, you said. And you said something also that really, it, 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 it you know, it, 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 it just, there's something that happened on the inside of me. I'm hoping that even the audience, when they listen to this, you said constantly transforming. That means it's not a one day event. This is something that is constant. That means on a daily basis, you know, the word of God talks about his mercies being new every day. So therefore we are being transformed every day. I think the tragedy is when we think we have arrived. That there's no longer room for you know um for transforming, no longer room, and we have conformed so much to culture, conformed so much to the narrative of the world, conformed to the narrative of the economy, the narrative of what religion says, the narrative of what um you know families expect of us, just the, just the total different wrong narrative, and I loved how. The three of you, you act like you sat down and you compared notes because your presentations were like hand and glove. Like each and every one kept going in to the presentation of the next person and it was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, thank you so much, Tola. I Words are, not, are never enough, you know, just to say you continue to impact humanity. Um, you continue to um, transform our understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus as women of faith celebrating International Day. You know, we continue to feed our minds with the word and we can be elevated to bigger platforms by just, you know, um, transforming, 
to what God wants us to really is. May God help us that we don't conform to the narratives of this world. We don't conform to the pressures of this world. May God help us. What I want to do now is bring you all back in, um, you know, into the in on onto the screen so that I can present you with um some of the questions that have um been put into my inbox. Um. Thank you so much for everyone who is online. We've got a few people who have um, connect, connected after we had made our uh, appreciations, after we had made our um, introductions in the beginning. Thank you so much. I see we have, my goodness, my mother-in-law is in the house. Ladies, I've got to behave myself right now, okay? So <laughs> please. No swearing. <laughs> no, seriously, my mother-in-law is in the house. Uh, Mom, Rosalind, she is. Uh, she was in the house. I'm not sure she's still locked in, but she was here and I saw her and my heart kind of like, I, I, I better behave myself right now. So thank you so much, Mom, for, for logging on. Thank you. My sister-in-law was on Rosalind. Um, um, uh, sorry, Rosalind, my mother-in-law. Um, I that she is a sister-in-law. Thank you so much for logging in. We've got an amazing woman of God who's also joined in. Maureen to it. Um, thank you so much. If you've got any questions right now and you don't want to come into, you, sorry, that you don't mind sharing on the actual comment section, please um, send us your comments. We are more than happy to just take a few minutes. We only have a few minutes left to just kind of um, answer a few questions. And if it's something that we feel we might need to signpost you in the right direction, that's what we do. We don't know it all. And if we need to maybe have a chat with you afterwards, we could do. I will provide the um, the emails will provide the um, social media handles for all our speakers so you are in touch with them so the first question that came into my inbox was from a woman of god who was addressing the question to um duchess docus she says i'm a single mom um who is divorced um, how did you deal with culture ugliness? I'm not sure how, that's all. How did you deal with culture ugliness? Uh, I guess it's the side of the side of culture that, um, you know, um, stereotypes single women and divorced women. So that's her question. And that one is, is to you, Pastor Dokas. Then the next, the other question came for um, Minister Hilda. Someone says, what are your challenges of raising African children in the Western world? I'm from Kenya and I am struggling, she says. Um, yeah, that's an, a question for you, Minister Hilda. And the last question that's just come through, she says, um, this one is for, oh, Minister Tola. Um, I'm just reading as it says. So please uh, accept that assignment, Minister Tola. She says, as a businesswoman and as a woman of God, all right, how can I, as the boss lady, balance the conforming and transforming in business and in ministry? Not sure about the, you know, the context here, but yeah, that was the question. So that's for you, um, uh, Tola. So I'll start with with um, Duchess Dorcas. Um, what I'd like to say is regarding how I dealt with culture, that is something that is still needing to be dealt with. Um, it was not easy. It was there. I couldn't shake it off, but um, the decision I'd made to go ahead um, with the divorce, obviously, I knew there was going to be a lot of backlash. So it is a process. Um, I cannot say that you can get over it overnight, but um, take it in its stride. And if you can get things like therapy, they do help. Just speaking to somebody who is independent of your family you will find that they listen to you and you're able to express yourself more. But there's no other way going around the issue of culture. It is still there. And that's where the stereotyping is that, you know, 
divorced people, single moms are always looked at in a very um, unfriendly manner so that you cannot run away from, but try and do things that will help you get along with life. And therapy is going to be one of them or get to speak to somebody who has been through it because um, it will help you because somebody who's generally been through it, um, I think you can listen to in a better manner because that person is sat there. She's not talking from something she read from a book, but she's telling you her personal experience and that would lift you up. So, I mean, without having more details, I mean, that is the best I can say, but um, encountering somebody who has been there and dealt with it, I think would be a brilliant idea. But as far as the culture is concerned, it's just uh, uh, something that that is there. Painful, difficult, but unfortunately, we just have to push on. I hope that answers your question. Well, I hope so. Um, you can inbox me. Um, I was just about to say her name and yet she had inboxed me. <laughs> I was about to say you can inbox and say her name. In you can send me another message, inbox me, let me know if 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 that um if that was it was the, that that answer was 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 uh, was helpful i'm sure it was and and you know the thing about that um pastor dorcas you've mentioned about therapy is that we we also have a narrative that we as as christians sometimes we 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 have a a, a belief system that is is counseling you know is it is it is it, is it permissible is it for us christians but christians are also human the reality of it is that even when we when we are when we fully given our lives to christ we still experience hurt we still experience pain we still experience trauma and um jesus never promised that we would not face you know all those type of um challenges and crises or emotional exhaustions and and being christian doesn't really it doesn't shield us from 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 things like that like it doesn't shield us and you know he doesn't god doesn't promise that we won't face spiritual warfare that is part of who we are as christians and so when when we when we take therapy as if it's a it's a demonic thing we we do ourselves a, a, you know an injustice I, I i highly recommend um therapy many people have spoken to who are in frontline ministry uh, uh you know have have turned to therapy just just being careful and knowing you know that you're being guided by the holy ghost by the spirit of god um the top of this the type of therapy that you're getting but get therapy get therapy is it's very important thank you so much for touching on that um you know um pastor docus i mean don't get me wrong um you know um, you know, on this broadcast, Jesus has the power to heal and deliver us from the struggles and pain that we 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 go through. You know, He's already saved us from 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 a lot of things. But in His wisdom and in His perfect will, He will allow us to 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 sometimes go through things. And if we we don't we don't take heed and acknowledge that actually some things that happen to us. There is a need for us to then look for professional help. We've had a topic before where we've talked about professional help versus the Holy Spirit. Maybe at some other time we might revisit, you know, um, that that um, that topic again. But thank you so much for that, um, Pastor Dorcas. And I will hand over to um, the next question was for Hilda. What are your challenges of raising African children? in the Western world, I'm from Kenya and I'm struggling. Do you wanna take that, Hilda? Yeah, um, what I can say is um, when I came to this country, Dylan and Lynn were three and four and they're now 24 and 23. And um, I think like what uh, Pastor Joka says, I needed to heal as a parent, as a mom, as a, as a divorce, as a girl that had got married at 19, so much in love, so everything, rainbows and, and, and flowers and roses, and then suddenly life changed. And so for me to be a better parent, I needed to heal. So going for therapy, talking to someone about how I, how I could get myself in a good place so I can be good for my kids was my starting point. 
because in that process of talking to someone, I learned about how you consist, how you, you, you implement consistency in your parenting skills. So when it came to disciplining my kids, when it came to loving my children, when it came to doing homework or schoolwork or any, or setting boundaries, I had the right measurements that I had been coached by someone else to say, if you're going to discipline your son on certain things, or if you're going to talk about this with them, this is how you need to approach things. And this is something that we possibly from an African community, we don't necessarily do that. We, we tend to, I've been around places where people tend to shout a lot at their kids and, and, and get a belt and, and hit kids and stuff. But I grew up in a home that, I necessarily, even though I was in Zimbabwe, I necessarily didn't get hit. My dad was a pastor. We used to say, let's sit down and talk. Why do you think he did this? How do you think that makes me feel? You know, and because I, I grew up having a conversation, it it became the channel that I also sort of parented my kids. And I think what has helped me to get to where I am is also praying for your children. So praying for your children and, but the consistency. So I, I used to say to Dylan and Linda, we laugh about it now because they're older, but we live near the seafront, the seaside. We're like 20 minutes walk from this from the beach to our house. And I used to say, I cannot get into the house before you get in the house. Summer holiday, everyone is at the beach. Everyone, it goes dark at 9 p.m., but Kef, you didn't change. Kef, you were six o'clock. You, I don't get from work and you're not in this house. And they used to laugh and say, mom, all our friends used to hate you. They used to think you are the worst person ever because what, just as the fun starts, we have to run back home because if we get home and if you get home before us, we knew that the rest of the summer holiday, we we're going to be doing maths and English in the house and we're not going anywhere. And I think instilling that and saying, if I said I was going to, if you do this, you're not going to have your Xbox or you're not going to have your phone no matter how much they irritate me, they didn't get that until the time frame that I stipulated to say, you're not having the phone for a week, I would stick to that because then they knew it wasn't an empty threat. But what I've seen other parents do is they'll put little boundaries or little rules and they get irritated because the kids keep asking, can I have my phone now? Can I have my phone now? And before you know it, you've given in. Can I go out now? Or you feel sorry and then you say, oh, you can just go out. But I, ha I had to make... The decisions that were really hard because I knew that I didn't have another person to to rely on it was just me I was the mom I was the dad I was the friend I was the enemy I was everything at the same space so one minute we could be best friends the next minute we could be completely people that don't like each other but I had to be consistent in everything that I did but how I got there is by getting help from somebody else and teaching me about the level of consistency that I needed to keep and 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 praying and, and and also relying on other moms that are older than me, asking them questions, saying, how did you get your kids to be like that? How did you get your place to, you know, the place that you are at? And when I needed, I think what helped me with having counseling or talking to someone was I knew when to ask for help. A lot of moms don't know when to ask for help because you assume you're being a burden. And I think it was knowing when to ask for help, reaching out to other people to help me that really got me to where we are now. And I've got really two good solid kids that are doing really well, excelling in their life. And we talk about how much they appreciate that strictness, that the stuff they hated about me, they love about me now. So, wow, wow. I think you've done justice to that question, um, Hilda. Do you know, um, I come back to part of your presentation where you talked about becoming your sister's keeper and not your sister's judge. And I think uh, the world that we live in now is sometimes you find um, social media doesn't do justice or does, well, social media doesn't make it easy to parent, uh, uh, whether you're a single parent or, you know, you're, 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 a married, you're a married couple, it still doesn't make it any easier. And what you're saying, what I hear you saying is, you know, don't don't be don't be afraid to ask for the help. Being your sister's keeper means I'm not just there to criticize anything and everything you're doing. I'm there to be able to come alongside you and sit where you sit, you know, mm -hmm. um, walk where you walk, see where you're bleeding, yeah. understand where you're at. 
and then be able to be that auntie or that uncle who is able to be there you know for your children and one of the things that we was not mentioned in this in this particular question is the issue of burnout how even as a single parent even though you you know you're doing a great job raising your children you do you know um get to a point where you burn out and who do you call on if that sister that you've looked up to is not really being um the person that you thought they were and there's more criticism than their compliments you know you are you're 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 you you're, you're in a position where you can be stuck so thank you so much for that hilda that was um that was great um answering that question thank you um, i just can i just add yes. one thing so something that i just th thought about just now is also it's so easy to compare your children with other people's children that's something that i learned never to do my kids were different from other children and I never wanted I I could admire the people's kids, but I never made my children to feel that that person's child was better than them because they were doing something different. But I think it's it's cementing that their identity is in whatever happens within your household and that you are enough as you are. And just because so and so's child is a doctor, it doesn't make them better than your child. But it's cementing that. You are enough, you are important, and you are my priority. And that's that's where it sits. And 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 we can admire the people and aim and emulate what they what they are doing and try and see how do they get there. But I'm never gonna um put them up more than you guys because even if you Absolutely. fail maths, you are still my child and I, I still want to value you for who you are. And I think that was another thing that I learned really early on to say never compare them with anyone else's child, cement identity in them that we are enough as we are within this household. Well, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you for that. I think it was um, Theodora Roosevelt who said comparison is a thief of joy. And sometimes we steal away from what God has initially, you know, uh, ordained our children to become by comparing them and using them and using other people's yardstick of what they ought to be. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he ought to be. And when, you know, he's older, he won't depart from it. There is a pattern of where a child ought to be. And it's not necessarily, you know, it's not the narrative of what someone else's child is living. So yes, thank you so much for that. Some very great and good parenting skills there. I'll hand over to um to, to Minister Tola to answer this question question now let me go back into my inbox do you remember the actual question minister Tola? do you want me to read it to you again yes please um so she says minister Tola, as a businesswoman and a woman of god how can i as the boss lady balance transforming and conforming um yeah balancing the transforming and conforming uh, well, I'll I'll use I'll use myself as an example. Obviously, I I do um I do the Women for Africa Awards. That's that's obviously my business, and I've also been in the entertainment industry. That's like the African entertainment industry for the last fifteen years. So that is managing artists, promoting artists, music, and everything like that, as well as being somebody who is rooted and grounded in her faith. Now, what, what I do is I do what I know I feel comfortable and at peace doing. So I don't necessarily listen because if I listen to what people say, and you know, it's very easy for Christians to try and believe that they're trying to get you transformed, but they're actually trying to get you conformed to a belief that they have that is not necessarily a right belief. So it's not just the world that tries to get us conformed. Sometimes Christians try to get us conformed to beliefs that are not actually right. And you have to understand who you are as a person doing what you are. I like how somebody said it once. They said, I'm a Christian and I'm a Christian in business. Not that I run a Christian business. That's two different things. You can run a Christian business, but you can be a Christian that is in business. And your business has nothing to do with being a Christian business. And that's what people need to separate and differentiate the difference from. 
And I feel that some people feel that there's certain things that we as Christians are doing and then they'll like to say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, you shouldn't be listening to that. Oh, you shouldn't be. But you have to understand who you are. You have to know your identity. There's no two people on the earth created the same. That's why if they go and put all of our fingerprints in the database and they want to find out who was holding Pastor Mercy's pen, it's going to be Pastor Mercy's fingerprints on there. It's not going to be mine because I haven't held her purse, her pen. It's not going to be Pastor Dorcas because she hasn't held your pen. And it probably won't be Hilda because she probably hasn't held your pen. But they will be able to identify that it's Pastor Mercy because only Pastor Mercy has Pastor Mercy's fingerprints. So when we understand our identity, we understand and we, we, we feel comfortable in the things that we're doing. If there's something that I'm doing that I don't feel comfortable about, I won't do it. And that's because I know my identity and I know that I have that inward witness. But it's not because somebody has now said, oh, you shouldn't do that. And then they now want me to conform to an ideal and a narrative that they're trying to present as a Christian belief that is not. So I would say that know who you are, renew your mind, make sure that you're trans being transformed by the renewal of your mind. And then you'll be able to strike that balance with who you are as a woman of God and who you are as well in your business. There's some things that you probably won't accept in your business now because you know who you are. And it might not necessarily because you're a Christian. It might be because at the end of the day, there's some things that you now understand. There's that wisdom that we have that is not of the world, that is from God, that we apply to the things that we do. So you just don't feel comfortable with doing some things. And then you just don't do them. And then there's some things that you do that you know that because of who I am, I can do this and I want to do this. I mean, you know with me, okay, Women for Africa. Women for Africa is an award ceremony for women that are nominated. Now, it's not a Christian award ceremony, but before the ceremony starts, you know, as I have been doing for the last nine years, and it's also going to happen year 10, before we start the ceremony, I get my pastor up on stage to come and pray, and then we now go into the award ceremony. I can do that because, number one, I want to do that. That's my faith. I don't have to because it's not a Christian business, but it's I want to do that, and I can do that. Why? Because it's my thing. It's my thing, so I can do that. And everybody knows that. And the thing is, even though it's not a Christian event, I remember there was a there was a woman that flew in from Kenya one year, Dr. Mary Okello. She's the first female banker in Kenya. And she also owns a, one of the top private schools that a lot of the actresses and that have gone to, have attended. Now, she flew in for the awards. But before she flew in for the awards, she asked the person who nominated her, do you know these people? Are they good people? Because she has built her name and her reputation to a standard that she cannot just associate with anything. Anyway, she got reassurance and she came. After the awards, she asked to meet myself and my husband because we're both founders of Women for Africa. So we went to meet her at ho her hotel before she went back. And she gave us gifts that she had bought for us from Kenya. And she talked about she how she enjoyed the evening. But she said, do you know what stood out for me that evening? She said, it wasn't the awards. It wasn't that she was being recognized. She said it was the way that we started off with prayer. She said that's what stood out at the ceremony for her. That was her highlight of the ceremony for her. Now, I don't do it because it's wow. somebody's highlight. Wow. or I do it because I know who I am and I know what I can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what I will allow and I know what I won't allow. Awesome. When I do my posts, I'm even, I'm sometimes I'm so intentional when I do posts, even if I'm doing, even if I'm doing an entertainment post, I might want to use the hashtag God's girl, hashtag God's leading lady, hashtag love is my DNA. And then I use hashtag Jesus lover. And the reason why I put Jesus lover, because I hear so many people call God, 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 but I yeah. don't know which God they're referring to. So sometimes I just want to make it a bit more specific to myself and let people know that even though I'm calling God, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So I will use the hashtag Jesus lover so they, they know I'm a lover of Jesus. So it's, it's knowing who you are, having that renewed mind, and it gives you that boldness and that confidence to do what you want to do, knowing that you're not conforming to what people want you to do. 
I wouldn't listen to somebody saying, oh, but you're doing a post and, you know, you're talking about this artist, but you're putting God, this, this, this. I'm not conforming to what you expect me to do. I'm mm -hmm. doing what I want to do underneath that post. Because some people reading that post, they will say, oh, my God, she's a Christian. Yeah. Just by reading that. Not just she does entertainment or she's been pushing entertainment for the last 15 years. She's a Christian. She's a woman of God. I went on a post one day. I wrote on a post one day and I, I, put, I put, my daily routine starts like this. I go to bed. I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. I've been waking up at 5 a.m. every day for the last five, six years. 5 a.m. and I join a group of women that pray. We pray every day, Monday to Friday from 5 till 6 a.m. Then I finish that. Then I go into the word and I read the word because I need to be renewed. And then I now have my own prayer. Outside of that, I now have my prayer that I pray by myself. Then I start my day. And then I just talked about other things. And a friend of mine, she's known me for a few years. She said, oh my God, sis, I didn't know that you pray every day at 5 a.m. or you did it. She now asks me, she said, I want to join that prayer group because I want to amplify <laughs> my prayer life as well. And she's been on the prayer group yeah. ever since yeah. as well. And she's been bringing people on the prayer group. So sometimes people don't know what you do, but you can interject it when you want. You don't have to be conformed to the world. Do what you know makes you feel comfortable doing and balance it. Just have that balance. It's not about being conformed. It's about transforming. It's about being transformed. And that's by the renewal of your mind because it lets you say, I'm not going to do it that way. This is the way I want to do it. And I'm happy doing it this way because you just don't know who is seeing what you're doing, who is looking at what you're doing and who is motivated, empowered, inspired, all the hashtags we've used today by what you're doing. Absolutely. Wow. Well, Pastor Tracy, I hope you've been, uh, oops. I hope you've been answered there. I hope you've been answered there. And um, anyone else who had a question similar to 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 um, some of our of the questions that were were thrown to us, I'm just trying to think to see Hilda. Are there any questions on the comments? We're running out of time, ladies and gentlemen. We're not running out of ideas, but um, our time is up. So what we might do is we might be able to go back into the comment section and um, try and answer all the other questions coming up. I'll get my guest speakers to be able to log in and you will see their um, their social media handles. Mm -hmm. We will make sure their social media handles are on there, but remember our hashtags throughout this, um, this whole program, what they were and what they were standing for. I want to encourage a woman who is listening tonight. You've been listening to International Women's Day. Maybe you had your that woman who had disqualified herself from everything um, that maybe the speakers were saying and you didn't quite understand what we were talking about. Or maybe you have identified with many of the things that we have discussed tonight. And maybe you are maybe that woman who has, perhaps you have privately been, been bleeding in your business, bleeding in your, in your, in your ministry, uh, bleeding in your career. Uh, you've been hemorrhaging emotionally, mentally, relationally, financially. Um, maybe perhaps you're that woman who is who has just had um a, a life where you you've been judged and you've been ostracized and uh, a lot of the things our speakers spoke about tonight as International Women's Day. I'm hoping that there's been some answers that have gone have gone forth. But I want you to know that there's nothing that no anyone um can have the power to stop you from excelling and doing things that has been ordained from the very beginning and the foundation of your life except you um the limited ex 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 you know circumstances that you are facing or you have faced um don't allow anything to limit what god has ordained for you so i want to dare you before before I hand over to Hilda so she can close and tell us about what's coming up next. I want to dare you, if you've been on this program, every person who has been on this program and has been listening, has been following the conversation, I want to dare you. If you're a woman of God, I want to dare you. If you are a woman in business, if you're a woman in politics, if you're a woman in corridors of influence, if you're a woman... Um, who is a stay-at-home mom, if you're a woman who is um, got an online business, whatever you are doing, however, whichever way you articulate your brand, I want to dare you to step outside of the box of limitation. If you heard anything tonight, 
are things that will frustrate you and try to 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 mold you into what God didn't say you are. So I want to dare you to step outside of that box of limitation. Step outside of that box of frustration. Step outside of that box of despair. Step outside of that box of rejection. Step outside of that box of shame and re and reproach. And step outside of that box that has contained you and blocked you to become everything that God has or ordained for you to become on this side of life. And I pray that uh, everything that you put your hands and your heart to will prosper while you are on the side of life. Um, we thank you for logging in tonight. Thank you so much. You know, I don't even, I don't think I can be able to mention all of you by name, but thank you for the amazing contribution. Thank you for coming into my inbox. And while we were wrapping up and while Minister Tola was answering the question, I got two more questions coming into my inbox, but we'll, we'll send those to the guest speakers and Perhaps um, they will be able to answer you or I'll be able to answer you or you'll get the answer actually on um, on the on the comment section. And but I just want to say thank you. I want to appreciate you for taking the time and uh, carving out time just to be part of this conversation. Thank you so, so much. May God truly um, bless you. May your cup overflow. And I pray a supernatural turnaround in what Whatever situation you are in right now, I pray that God will allow you to um to excel in everything that you put your hands and your heart to. So I'm gonna hand over to to um, Minister Hilda. She's gonna she's gonna close for us and um and get you give you information about our our next event. Minister Hilda, over to you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Messi. Thank you, Pastor Docus, and thank you, Wise Fella. It's always an amazing to to hear you speak. Um, so I'm just, I'll just, you know, if you you've been on this platform and you've been listening to the stuff that we've been talking about, and maybe you've been following Equip for Excellence for quite a while now, and you know, for us to carry on doing the stuff that we're doing, supporting the people that we support within within our our, our platform and our organization, um. If you feel that you want to partner with us and, and understand our vision and join us in the vision that we have, you know, empowering one woman at a time, you know, just you can reach out to myself or reach out to Dr. Messi and we can tell you about how you can partner with us as, as an organization and how you can get involved in some of the stuff that we do. And I think we all know that for any organization to carry on going we depend on people being generous and giving. And so if you feel any of the topics that's been discussed today, they've touched you and you really want to impart some uh, giving towards what's be, what the work that's already being done, you know, reach out to us. And also if any of the stuff that's been discussed today, tonight, and they affect you in a different way, that's that's not positive. Also reach out to Dr. Messi, reach out to Pastor Dokas, myself or, or Wise Tola, and, and we can talk about different things and we can signpost you to the right avenues and the right people to talk to. And in terms of the events that are coming up, for us in, in next month in April, we have the World Health Day, which is on the 7th of April, and it's time UK time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and it's gonna be a virtual event. And so that's something that we're looking forward to. And then we've got another event in May, which is International Missing Children Day. But for now, we're just gonna focus on the World Health Day, which is in April. And, you know, and in the meantime, as I said again, you know, if you want to partner with us, if you want to find out what Equipped for Excellence is all about as an organization, what our vision is, what our goals are, we have a website that you can go to and have a look on our website, the work that we're currently working on, the stuff that we're currently doing. And also, we've got more and more conferences coming up and more candid talks coming up. So keep keep an eye on, our, on Dr. Messi's um, Facebook page or even on our Equipped for Excellence page and you can see the stuff that's coming up. And with that, I would like to just, I'll, I will just do a closing prayer and then we can let everyone get back to their evening. Let us pray.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the women that you've put on this platform to bless us with all the giftings that you've given them. Lord, I pray for every person that's under the sound of my voice, that Lord, whatever experiences that they're going through, whatever life is taking them, that Lord, you would bless them, that you would anoint them, that you would walk with them, and that Father, you would give them the direction of where they're supposed to go and how they're supposed to handle things. Lord, I pray that for every woman that is not able to celebrate International Women's Day because of oppression or because of the pain or any any other thing that they're going through, that Father, you would facilitate a sister that would keep them safe. You would facilitate a channel that people would come through and, and be of help to them. Lord, I thank you for blessing us. I thank you for giving us the freedom to speak about you, Lord, to speak about all the things that we are, we, we were talking about in complete freedom and without fear of condemnation or judgment or anything else, Lord. So we thank you because you are so good. I just th thank you, Lord, and I ask you for you bless the women that have given on this platform to just speak their hearts out, to plan for this, that you would bless them with more and more words of wisdom, Lord. And in the stuff that they do, the event that Wise Tola is doing, that Lord, you would bless that event. You would allow people to buy tickets and that she would get to the point where she sold out of tickets. So Father, we pray for selling out of all the tickets, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And I also pray for Pastor Dorcas in the, in the stuff that she's doing with the women that she comes across, that Father, she will carry on being an impactor of their, of their lives, oh Lord, in a positive way. I thank you, Lord. I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen.